Welcome to Hearing God's Voice. In today's message, God talked with Habakkuk. Dr. McLuhan reveals four keys to help people hear God's voice. On January 9th, I heard the Lord say to me, preach a series of messages that reveal the direct conversations that God had with the key characters of the Bible. God wanted me to help people to understand that he spoke to men and he speaks to women, that he speaks to young and he speaks to the old. He is no respecter of persons, as the Bible said. He spoke to prophets and he spoke to people who were not prophets and that gives you and me hope that he will speak to us as well. <clears throat> he spoke to people who were doing their best to follow him and to people who were not following him at all. He revealed himself to pharaohs and to kings who did not even believe in him. He spoke to people who were running away from him. He has not changed. He is still speaking to people today. Since January 9th, I have preached eight messages, shared eight messages with you on conversations that God had with a whole variety of people. And these have been some of the most watched messages that I have preached to this congregation. We invite you to visit my YouTube channel at Dr. Peter McLuhan and visit the playlist on hearing God's voice to review some of these messages. Now, the purpose of these messages is encourage you to believe that God is willing to talk to you and he wants you to talk to him. The standard Islamic narrative teaches that Allah is distant and that people cannot have a personal relationship with him or a conversation with him. These messages have proved that that is a distorted view of God. Prophet Jeremiah offers all who desire to have a relationship with God this wonderful promise. You will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I will be found by you declares the Lord, Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. What a great offer from God himself. It is no surprise that prophet Habakkuk is not mentioned in the Quran because he teaches that people can hear from God. Habakkuk gives us a clear teaching on how to hear God's voice. He did not prophesy to anyone in particular. No king is mentioned but rather he asked God to talk to him about the two most important questions that people were asking him. People wanted to know answers to these two questions, many others as well, but why do the bad guys always seem to be winning? Is that a question you've ever had? They also wanted to know why God used wicked nations to punish less wicked nations. Is that a question that you might ever have had? God gave Habakkuk clear answers to these difficult questions. To the first question, God said to Habakkuk, look amongst the nations, see and wonder and be astonished, for I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if you were told. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 5. Now God's answer to the second question that people asked included a clear teaching on how to hear his voice. In the second chapter of Habakkuk, we learn an important teaching on how God speaks to people. This is what we read. I will make my stand at the watch post. I will station myself on the tower. I will look out and see what he says to me. This is Habakkuk speaking. Now, multiple signal stations, like this station, stretched over hundreds of miles, conveying danger or reporting good news back to the city of Jerusalem. This signal station is close to the city of Jericho and also close to the Mount of Olives. It's a lovely reference to these lookout stations and the writing of Isaiah the prophet. Have you ever wondered what this means? How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who say, your God reigns. And it is from 
Isaiah is referring to the people who climbed up these mountains to get the signal and send it either away from Jerusalem or back to Jerusalem. So this station that reported to the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, uh, it reported from places to the north and to the east of the town. Now, this next station called Herodium was south of Bethlehem, and it reported the news from Egypt to Jerusalem. Uh, Herodium was one of the more sophisticated of these towers. Uh, it has stationed soldiers so they could be deployed in times of battle if anything untowards came towards the city from the southern direction. Now, these, help, these stations help us to understand how physical messages were translated and conveyed prior to telecommunication that we enjoy today. But now Habakkuk is going to switch from the physical to the spiritual. How does God convey messages to us spiritually? And what he says about what he experienced there helps us to understand how God wants to talk to you and how he wants to talk to me. The Lord, notice capital L-O-R-D, that's God himself, answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he who runs may read it. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. So prophets saw pictures or visions, and from these visions and pictures that they saw, they translated them into words so people could receive the message that God wanted them to. To have God wants to give you pictures, and he wants you to understand from that picture something that he is doing in his life. So Habakkuk was told to write down these words so that the people who carried the message could run and share it with others. And in these simple verses, I'd like to suggest that there are four keys that help us hear God's voice more clearly. And the first is to quiet ourselves down. The second is to fix our eyes on Jesus. The third is to tune our hearts to spontaneous flow. And the fourth is to write it down. And so these are some things that we can learn in the message today. First of all, we are to quiet ourselves down. Uh, David said, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalm 46 and verse 10. So we live in a world that's so filled with distractions. And learning to be quiet is a difficult thing to do. I enjoy silence. I can ride for hours without listening to a radio, but that would just drive most people completely crazy. But it's a good time just to think and talk and to meditate. But how do you quiet yourself down? And one of the reasons we want to learn how to quiet ourselves down is so that we, we lift out the distractions from our minds so that God can talk to us. We want to understand how our brain works, uh, understanding more about how our brain works will be helpful to us. The right side of our brain tends to be that creative side, the intuitive side, where you, where you get uh, ideas about people, just things come to you, and you say, I must be psychic or something. Has everybody said that to you? How do you know that? Well, you just know it. It's not psychic, it's God, but how do you know that? The left side of our brains tends to be logical and analytical, administrative. Be careful. You know, don't take a risk. The brain says, oh, it'll be fun. The right says it'll be fun. The left side says, oh, no, 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 be careful. Don't do that. And so our brains at war quite often between us. And uh, we're trying to decide which side we're going to go with, what time, when we'll be creative, and when we'll be cautious. So that... that uh, that cautious side needs to be quietened down, not silence, but just quietened down so that the right side can wake up more to hear what God wants to say to us. That left side's working on the to-do list. And if that happens to you, just take a few moments and write out the to-do list. Get it off of your mind, out of your brain, so that you can devote the right side to hearing more from God. This will give God greater access to your creative side. 
And one of the reasons that God gives people dreams and visions, and one of the reasons they come at night is because our brain is pretty much turned off and God can bypass the left side and get a message to you on the right side and help you uh, hear from him in a way that you might say, oh, no, 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 can't do that. And so uh, we're going to quiet ourselves down, and then we are going to fix our eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, we are invited to by the writer of Hebrews, who was the author and the perfecter of our faith or the race that we are to run. And the writer is simply saying to us, Jesus has designed a road course for you and for me to run in life. He knows where the uphills are. He knows where the downhills are. He knows the high moments. He knows the low moments. And he has run your course already. And so he is waiting for you to look to him for help in those challenging moments. And so if you are able to, uh, See Jesus, just picture him sitting next to you, uh, sitting in the pew in fr- uh, the chair in front of you or the chair behind you or just where you are in your home on your couch sitting next to you. Just, just picture him there. If you can see him, it's great. Maybe you can just hear his presence or feel his presence next to you. So you want to be thinking about him when you are asking God to speak to you. If you were thinking about the movie you just watched or other things that are going on, the troubles that you're facing in life, uh, you know, Jesus never had a problem. So so that's why we want to fix our thoughts on him because he can address those issues that we are facing. So as you imagine Jesus sitting next to you, what does he want to say to you to help you overcome the challenge that you are facing? We want to tune our hearts to spontaneous flow. And what in the world do I mean by spontaneous flow? John, uh, Jesus said, whoever believes in me, as the scriptures say, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. John chapter 7 and verse 38. Now, is there anything more special than sitting next to a babbling brook and having a picnic and just enjoying an idyllic uh, sight like that? And just listen to the thing babble. Now, the word babble is very close to the word prophecy or nebi. It is to bubble. And God wants to let a thought bubble up within you and come to you that is divine in its origin. And so there's a certain amount of spontaneity that often the left side will kill, but the right side will say, let's enjoy this spontaneous moment in the presence of the Lord, fixing our eyes on Jesus and letting him speak to us. And so as we think about this this babbling brook, there's something deeply satisfying about being in the presence of running water. So many people have fountains in their homes. There's just something soothing about it. And that's the idea. Spiritually, we want to be soothed in the presence of the Father And let Holy Spirit just think, allow bubbles to rise up into our minds and to begin speaking to us. Now think of the cartoons that we used to especially read. They're still in newspapers. And you see these thoughts as bubbles over the character. And the character is having a thought. And that's what God wants to do to you. He wants to put a thought over your mind or in your mind that you can say, wow, I I never would have thought of that. And as you think about it, you recognize it's God. So God speaks to us through spontaneous thoughts that bubble up in our minds when we are focused on Jesus. The fourth piece of advice that Habakkuk gives us is that we should write it down, write the vision, make it plain on a tablet that he who runs may read it, Habakkuk chapter 2. And I just want to encourage you, Have you ever had a really vivid dream? And so I'm going to remember that one. And you wake up and the thing is just completely gone out of your mind. And so just have a little piece of paper and a pen or a a pencil next to your bed. And whenever you wake up, just jot down as as you have that dream. Quite often we wake up after a dream. And then just write down a sentence or two or several words. You don't need to get yourself fully awake. 
That happened to me at 4 o'clock this morning, and I wrote three sentences about a very colorful dream that God gave me last night. And I'm sure at some point it will make sense to me or it will reveal something to me. I'll say, oh, that's why that God gave me that dream. And so we encourage you to write down your dreams, try to put them into words, and then in the morning say to God, is there anything you want to say to me about this dream that you just gave me? If you'll practice these simple steps, you will find it easier and easier to hear God's voice. Uh, I've shared with you that I keep a journal, and sometimes I share things with you out of my journal. But this morning, uh, earlier today, I I went through my journal for 2024, looking for key words that for me are dreams, and there's something about there that I'll write, and then key words like rhema, which is a word spoken directly from God. And so as I visited those words, I remind you that Jesus does want to talk to you, and he believes that you can hear his voice. This is not just true for me or true for special people or true for, for um, somebody that you think is uh, gifted. Uh, this is God speaking to you through Jesus. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, John chapter 10 And verse 27, every person can hear the voice of Jesus. Even if you're not following him, you can still hear his voice. If you are following him and you're not hearing his voice, something has happened. You've either been not taught well or something has happened to shut you down from hearing the voice of God. You may be trying to protect yourself from a wound or an injury, but God can get through that. And speak to you, and you'll hear his voice, and he will help you and lift you up. Most people can clearly identify when Jesus called them to follow him. Think about when you made your decision to follow Jesus. Most people can give you the details about that in just a second. I remember when I understood that I was a sinner and that I needed to ask Jesus to forgive me for my sins, and and I accepted him as my personal savior. It happened when I was five years old. You say, well, did you sin by his five? Well, if you've ever had a (laughs) two-year-old, then you'll know the answer to that question. I became aware that I was sinful. I was watching a Billy Graham film. This is in the 50s, black and white film in South Africa in Port Shepstone at the town hall. And I knew that I needed to make a decision. It was not enough that my pastor, my father was a pastor, that they were missionaries but that I too needed to make this decision for myself. I remember it like it is yesterday, obviously, from the way I am describing it to you today. So Jesus spoke to me, and I responded to him by asking him to come into my heart and to forgive me for all of my sins. Now, sadly, I did not know that Jesus wanted to keep the conversation going. I did not know how to keep the conversation going with God. Uh, And so today we have heard four keys that will help people keep the voice of God in your life alive and fresh. There's nothing like hearing a fresh word from the Lord. It changes the atmosphere of a difficult moment. Uh, Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 11 says, A word aptly or fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. And God wants to hand you today a beautiful apple, a thought from him that will encourage you. So how can we know what God's voice sounds like? Here's a definition that has helped me to know what the voice of God sounds like or when he is speaking to me. God's voice sounds like spontaneous thoughts that come alive in your mind when you are fixing your eyes on Jesus. Let me say it again. God's voice sounds like spontaneous thoughts that come alive in your mind while you are fixing your eyes on Jesus. Have you ever tried to solve what seemed like an impossible problem, and then all of a sudden a light just goes on for you? And you might find you're saying, where in the world did that idea come from? And then you will know that that was an idea given to you by God himself. That is uh, most likely the voice of God speaking to you. 
And God speaks through his word. He also speaks through thoughts that bubble up within us. The Bible is called the word of God because it contains God's words. Now, the Bible doesn't contain all of God. That wouldn't be, make any sense. God has got to be bigger than his book but is the authoritative standard by which we judge every thought that comes to us. So every thought that you have is not necessarily from God. It has to be evaluated in the light of who Jesus is, the character of Jesus, and what is already in the word. When we read the Bible, we are hearing God's words. God's word is referred to as the Logos. And many people have discovered when they read the Bible that certain verses just jump off of the page. And it's like, that's just for me, at least for today. And uh, I can have a special verse today. You could have that same special verse a day or two from now. But God has made that word come alive in your heart. And when that happens, it's changed from being a written word to a rhema word. It is spoken into your life. So Logos is the written word. But a rhema is a spoken word, meaning that God has brought that message directly to you and made it come alive in a way that you had never seen it before. How many of you said, I've read the Bible a hundred times and didn't see that verse? <laughs> because it just came alive in that moment. So the word rhema occurs over 70 times in the Bible. Here's a clear example of a rhema word when Gabriel announced to the Virgin Mary that she would conceive a child uh, this is what he said, you will be with child and give birth to a son and you'll give him the name Jesus. If you read the story, you know Mary was perplexed by all of this and began pondering it in her heart. She asked, how would this be possible since I am a virgin? And Gabriel explained to her this would happen with these words, nothing is impossible with God. It's a wonderful statement. Whatever you're facing, I just want to say to you, it's not impossible to God. But the Greek word for nothing or no thing is the word rhema. This means that Mary received a direct word from God about the conception of Jesus in her womb. But here is an important understanding about rhema words. This word came with the backing of heaven, the power and the purpose of heaven. And so when you receive a rhema word, you don't have to try to figure out how to make it happen because it's going to happen by God's power. God has given you a word that seems totally impossible. That makes it a rhema word because he will do something to make it possible. So by walking in obedience to the Lord and believing the word that he gave us, these rhema words come about in the right time. Now, as I said earlier, not every voice you hear are thoughts from God. And Paul warned us about this, that there are thoughts that come to our minds that are not from God. We read in 2 Corinthians, we are destroying arguments and every lofty opinion that's raised against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to Christ. So when we get an idea, we want to run it through. Does this sound like Jesus? Does this look like Jesus? Does it have the character of Jesus on it? So here are some examples of the three main voices that people hear. So we ask these questions. Is this voice kind, loving, inspirational, wise, and healing? If it's not, it's not God. Is this voice vicious, destructive, negative, and condemning? If it is, it's not God. Is it logical, analytical, or practical? So you just take ideas and things that people say to you. I've had some terrible things said to me, and I just said, when I hear God's voice, he doesn't talk to me that way. And that will help you uh, to, to deflect things that are said to you that are not said in the register of God's voice. So if it's loving, kind, inspirational, and wise, then we are hearing the voice of your heavenly father. If it is destructive, vicious, negative, accusing, and condemning, it is from the father of lies. It is from Satan. And then if it's logical, analytical, and practical, then it is your own natural mind. So this is a grid that we can run the ideas that come through our minds as we make decisions about what we are hearing. And so 
Let's just review a minute. We want to quiet ourselves down, fix our minds on Jesus, tune to spontaneous flow of thoughts, write it down, and then you can have something in a journal to read about what God wants to say to you. So as you uh, contemplate today's message, I want to give you uh, an assignment to take with you. And here are two questions that you could ask God from time to time. How do you see me right now? It might sound like a frightening question, but wherever you are in your walk with him, God will take you to a higher level or invite you to the next step. Whether you're satisfied or dissatisfied, God will seize more in you than you see in yourself. And what do you want to say to me? Maybe you've heard me ask these questions to you over the years. I invite you to ask them again. Ask God. What do you want to say to me? I do that quite often. And then just pause and see what thoughts begin to bubble. So I believe some listening to this message are hearing the voice of Jesus for the very first time. You've seen Jesus in a new life. You've always wanted to have a relationship with God, but you've been told it's not possible. But today you're hearing that it is possible. You want to be forgiven for your sins. Commit your life to Jesus. You want to know that you'll go to heaven when you die. You've heard the voice of Jesus say to you today, come and follow me. We invite you to do just that. Thank Jesus for revealing himself to you today. Thank him for opening the ears of your your ears to hear his voice. Accept him as your savior. Say, forgive me for the sins I've committed and fill me with your Holy Spirit. If you just prayed with me to receive Jesus as your savior, write to me. And we'll tell you more about what it means to follow Jesus. Father God, it's wonderful that you created us to be able to hear your voice. Thank you that in Jesus, you made a way for us to be your children. Help us to grow in the depth and the breadth of our conversations with you. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.